A pleasant day class! Welcome to Horticulture Module for Grade 10. This focuses on Quarter 4, Week 3 to 4 discussion. So let's get started! For this week, we will going to discuss harvesting activities based on maturity indices. This lesson will briefly discuss on the different harvesting activities on maturity indices. Fresh fruits and vegetables must be harvested at the correct stage of maturity if it is to maintain its quality attributes throughout its post-harvest life. Prematurely harvested produce is highly susceptible to shriveling and mechanical damage and it is inferior flavor and color when ripe. Overmature produce may be fibrous, soft, and poor eating quality in terms of sweetness, flavor, and color. It is therefore essential that those involved in harvesting receive training to identify the correct maturity indices for the crops and product concern. Let us define harvesting. Harvesting is the process where farmers collect ripe fruits or crops from the field. The harvesting is very important to store the crops in a proper manner and to sell in the future. If the proper harvesting is not done, then the product will not be able to sell in the future. After harvesting, the crops will go through storage phase. So when the crop became ripened, then they need to be harvested in proper manner. It is important to apply good harvesting methods to be able to maximize grain yields and minimize grain damage and quality deterioration. These are the basic operations in harvesting. Number one, ripping. Ripping is cutting the mature panicles and straw above the ground. Number two, threshing. Threshing is separating the paddy grain from the rest of the cut crop. Number three, cleaning. It is removing immature, unfilled, non-grain materials. Hauling is moving the cut crop to the threshing location. Field drying, leaving the cut crop in the field and exposing it to the sun for drying. Stocking or piling. Temporarily storing the harvested crop in stacks or piles, it is optional. Bagging. Putting the threshed grain in bags for transport and storage. Traditional harvesting activities such as field drying and stocking piling are not recommended because they can lead to rapid quality deterioration and increased harvest losses. Besides, a variety of other activities can be included in harvesting such as gathering, ripping, or gathering standing a grain by cutting, bundling, and various forms of transporting the crop and grain. Harvesting systems Harvesting systems vary from region to region. A wide variety of traditional and semi-mechanical tools or combined harvesters may be used. These are the most common harvesting systems. Number one, manual harvesting and threshing. It is the use of traditional tools such as sickles, knives, threshing racks, simple treadle, simple treadle threshers, and animal for trampling. Next is manual reaping and mechanical threshing. Manual harvesting by hand uses portable thresher or small stationary machine thresher. Third is ripping followed by machine threshing. Uses a reaper, threshing by thresher, and cleaning either manually or by machine. Combined harvesting combines all processes, ripping, threshing, and cleaning. Maturity indices. The maturity index of a fruit provides an indication of its stage of development or maturation. Maturity indices are based on characteristics that are known to change as the fruit matures. Maturity indices for harvest can be either subjective or objective. 
These are the subject criteria for evaluating fruit maturity. Number one is fruit shape and size. Fruit shape may, in some cases, be used to evaluate maturity. The size and shape of stone fruit, such as peaches in particular, is affected by variety, seasonal condition, and crop load and orchard variability. Constant measurement of this fruit is therefore vital in order to determine when they are of a marketable size. Some fruits are considered mature when fruit shoulders and sutures are well developed and filled out. Similarly, the fullness of the cheeks adjacent to the pedicle to the pedicel in mangoes provides an indication of maturity. Number two, number of days after full bloom. Day after full bloom or DAFB can provide an approximate harvest date or a bulb park guess. This approach relies on a reproducible date for the time of flowering and relatively constant growth period from flowering through maturity. Third is fruit aroma. Volatile compounds synthesized during ripening give fruit their characteristic odor and provide an indication of the level of maturity. Fruit odor is generally detectable by humans when the fruit is completely ripe and is of limited use in commercial situations. For fruit color, as fruit mature and ripen, they undergo a color change from green to red or yellow, for example, papaya. Characteristics affecting harvest quality while observing Philippine Gap Principles Philippine Good Agricultural Practices, or PhilGAP, refers to the practices that address environmental, economic, and social sustainability for on-farm processes, and which result in safe and quality food and non-food agricultural products. This involved in RA 10611. Field gap refers to farm level approaches designed to reduce the risk of contamination during on farm production and post production processes. This approach is a set of principles, regulations, and technical recommendations that are applicable during primary production, processing, and food transport agreed upon by the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN where Philippines is one of 10 members. GAP bridges the gap between traditional farming practices and market as well as the stakeholders or customers standards for agricultural and non-agricultural products. Good agricultural practices or GAP recommendations addresses the following. Number one, environmental protection and management, which represents safe and responsible handling of agrochemicals and biodiversity. Next is food safety. It pertains to safe, healthy, and quality produce for better nutrition and consumption. GAP also addresses works, health, safety, and welfare. It involves improves farmers and consumer condition, enhance the agricultural family welfare, and it also addresses the product quality, wherein it refers to globally competitive produce improve food security. Why do we need GAP or Good Agricultural Practices? First, it is a language of trade. Second, food safety assurance. It ensures sustainability of farmers' practices. It is competitive edge and it has a market access. These are the recommended good harvesting procedures. Use white clean cloth and gloves. Use correct clean containers. Prevent overfilling. Prevent damaging the fruit, dropping the fruit into the containers at a distance and rough handling. Use selective harvesting and correct maturity index. 
use correct equipment and harvesting techniques, and harvesting time and weather condition. Characteristics affecting harvest quality during gap harvesting. Containers used for field collection, harvested produce, personnel participating in the harvesting and grading, the state of health of the staff involved in harvesting, personal behavior during the harvest, specific harvesting training need. For your performance task, Direction, Graphic Organizer. Describe the maturity indices for the following fruit crops and vegetables. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. So, our topic is all about maturity indices of different fruits and vegetables like mango, watermelon, pineapple, tomatoes, ampalaya, and junk fruit. You are now ready to take the formative assessment. For the direction, identification. Identify what is being described in the statements below. Choose the answer on the box. Write your answer on a separate sheet of paper. Number one, the temporarily storing the harvested crop in stock or files. Number two, removing of immature and filled non-grain materials. Bridges the gap between traditional farming practices and market as well as the stakeholder standards for agricultural and non-agricultural products. 4. Moving the cut crop to the threshing location. 5. Generally detectable by humans when the fruit is completely ripe and is of limited use in a commercial situation. 6. Cutting the mature panicle and straw above ground. 7. Separating the paddy grain from the rest of cut crop. Number 8. It uses portable thresher or small stationary machine threshers. Number 9. The process of removal of entire plants or economic parts after maturity. 10. Putting the threshed grain in bags for transport and storage. For the keto correction, number 1, stocking, number 2, cleaning, number 3, gap or good agricultural practices, number 4, howling, number 5, fruit aroma, number 6, ripping, 7, threshing, 8, manual ripping and mechanical threshing, number 9, harvesting, and number 10, bagging. I hope you got it all correct. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day! I hope you learned something from this video. For more videos and updates, don't forget to click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. God bless everyone!